Hello, and welcome to today's session. My name is Rodrigo Sanchez Rede. I am the Senior Director of Strategic Ecosystems and Informatica, and, I'm and I manage our uh, global partnership with Databricks. Today, we will spend some time discussing how Informatica and Databricks complement each other to help enterprises accelerate the development of data engineering pipelines, as well as provide a, a highly governed set of solutions for customers that can dramatically improve business outcomes while also reducing risk and increasing agility. In other words, we will talk about how do you put, how do you unlock the potential of the Databricks lakehouses by leveraging Informatica data governance. One minor housekeeping item before we dive into it: uh, please do type your questions into the Q and A box uh, provided. We will either review them in writing as we go along or answer them at the end of the session. Today's session uh, covers quite a bit of content, and so please make sure that you do enter your questions as they arise in the presentations, and we'll try to cover uh, and re respond to as many of them as we can. For the agenda today, we're going to talk a few, a little bit about what, what are some of the barriers that we're seeing uh, in our joint customer base to adopting um, AI, machine learning, and analytics projects. Discuss a little bit what we mean by modern, modernization towards cloud. Um, uh, discuss our partnership with Databricks. Uh, finally, think, talk about some of the critical success factors for uh, some of your data science and AI and ML projects. And finally, discuss a specific customer story. Uh, one last thing before I jump into it is that I will be talking about things that we plan to do in the future, uh, releases and things like that. And of course, the hardest thing about the future is, is uh, to predict it. And so just uh, bear in mind that, you know, things may change, the circumstances change, et cetera. This is just meant to be a, an overview for inf informational purposes only. So why are we all here? We're all here because we know very well that uh, the, the lifeblood of analytics, of AI and ML, is data. This is obviously, this is the data and AI uh, summit. Uh, so I don't have to, you know, I'm, I'm covering well, well hollow ground, except that as you guys know, you know, some of some interesting figures that you see here in the chart is, you know, uh, the, the, the volumes of data, of course, are growing dramatically. Uh, a 60% company on a growth rate is, is an incredible number. Um, we also see, of course, that with that massive fire hose of data coming your way, a lot of it just goes unused, right? It, it, it's what uh, Splunk calls dark data, which is that it's data that's being produced. There are some insights in it somewhere, but it's just going unused because of A, the sheer volume, or because it's hard to get because it's siloed or because it's in different formats, et cetera. Um, and that also points to a, a, a slightly more insidious problem, which is that you may not know where your sensitive data is actually stored, which itself can be a humongous problem. Uh, uh, you know, if you think about, you know, 50% of organizations saying, I don't even know where my sensitive data is. That's actually a staggering statistic. Um, and also a lot of companies report that uh, they are uh, confronted by issues of, of just uh, data quality and complexity, right? So yes, I have all this data. I really want to use it, but it turns out that when I, when I set my analysts on it, when I say my data scientists on it, they actually spend the majority of their time coming through it uh, sort of, uh, uh, aligning it to the use case that I need, making sure that it's of the proper quality, that it's coherent, et cetera. Uh, and that's a lot of wasted time. And finally, uh, at the same time, you have this sort of countervailing force where every company out there, almost every co modern company out there wants to make sure that they have the ability to essentially inject more and more data into how they make decisions. So, you know, 80% of, of corporations, as I mentioned before, they're saying, hey, we actually want to enable our as many employees and stakeholders in our uh, in our company or of our company to have access to this data to inject the data into how they make decisions how to do the daily work that actually when you pair that with all the other challenges here creates a very interesting very difficult conundrum to solve and so so a lot of companies when they are faced with these problems are deciding to go to cloud and essentially they want to modernize their infrastructure to enable them to essentially tap uh, or resolve all the issues that we talked about before right so you want to have the ability to do your data engineering, manage your data warehouse for a close, uh, move all your data into cloud-based data lakes, integrate your applications in, you know, with cloud data, have them run in the cloud, and ultimately also make sure that you have uh, your data science workloads running in the cloud. And the common thread across all of these, of course, is integration. Um, and together, Informatica and Databricks provide you the best-in-class capabilities to service all these different workloads in the cloud across all the three big infrastructure providers. So you want to be, have the ability to very quickly and easily ingest data into the Delta Lake from as many sources as possible. Informatica has made significant investments over the last few years to make sure that you have the ability to consume data from things like streaming sources. So your IoT clouds, your uh, uh, web logs, your... Uh, 
uh, REST APIs also have the ability to consume data from databases. So you want to, you know, have the ability to create, create a snapshot of the source database, uh, load it into Delta, and then as, as well have the ability to drive incremental changes and have those reflected into the your logical landing areas inside uh, Delta. And also, of course, the ability to land, to move uh, files into Delta. So we see a lot of legacy applications that throw things like CSV documents uh, or CSV files that uh, you want to be able to very quickly and reliably load into Delta and again into these logical areas that a lot of customers use uh, for data loading. And once the data is in, in Delta, of course, you want to accelerate your analytics. You want to leverage things like the fact that you have high uh, assurance of the consistency of the data through Delta Lake's asset uh, capabilities as well as schema enforcement and other enhance enhancements to really drive better analytics uh, of the data that you've been loading. And you can also choose to use Informatica to as you improve the, the quality of the data set, as you prepare the data for either BI analytics or for machine learning type of workloads, or to make it available through an, for an application uh, um, to, to use as reference, et cetera. Um, you know, both Informatica and, and Databricks together help you achieve these things. And ultimately, all of this is built on trust. And so what you want to have, of course, is the ability to have uh, a bird's eye view, if you will, of everything that is going into your Delta Lake how the data is moving inside of your Delta Lake, how, how it's actually flowing inside the Delta Lake. And we have a, a, a very deep integration with Delta with our uh, data catalog that I will talk about, about in a minute. So what are some of those critical success, fact, success factors uh, for AI analytics? Uh, you want to uh, start, uh, of course, with the cloud. So everything that you do has to be cloud ready. Uh, very few companies are investing in, in on-premises infrastructures. Uh, every, everybody, of course, I don't have to tell you the benefits of cloud. Uh, we spoke about that before, but you also want to make sure that, you know, you have the ability to do things in a way that you don't carry some of the uh, disadvantages of the on-premise world. So, for example, you want to have the ability to build your data engineering pipelines with as little coding as possible. Uh, you also want to make sure that you have as little operational overhead as possible. And more importantly, you want to have no limits on data. So with Informatica and Databricks together, of course, we provide the uh, the codeless UI for you to build your data engineering pipelines. Uh, and together with, uh, we have you provide you with the ability to manage the, the life cycle of uh, Databricks jobs clusters uh, and upcoming SQL analytics clusters so that you don't have to worry about operating anything in terms of the infrastructure. And ultimately, you know, Databricks brings you no limits on data, right? So uh, the wonderful thing about the Databricks Delta engine, of course, is the ability to have essentially infinite elasticity uh, the ability to to run, um, you know, scale your jobs up and down as much as you need, et cetera. And all of that essentially makes you ready for uh, AI and ML uh, workloads as well as advanced analytics. So let's talk about one, each one of these elements um, uh, in detail. So when, of course, in Informatica, we've been in actually in cloud for many years. A lot of customers don't know this. We actually have a cloud native data integration product called Cloud Data Integration, as it happens, which is part of our integration platform as a service or Informatica Intelligent Data Cloud Management. Um, and in there, of course, you have the ability, for those of you familiar with Informatica already, you have the ability to essentially design your data flows in the form of mappings, which is that um, picture you see on the right, uh, above on the right. You essentially, you build your logic in the form of mappings. Uh, we actually, out of the box, have connectivity to over 200 sources that you can connect to and then move the data into, into the Delta. Uh, and one of the future releases is going to include the ability to actually uh, create your pipelines uh, in that type of uh, visualization and then push it down into Databricks, which is the other image that you see here, which is the ability to create workflows, uh, where essentially you run jobs sequentially uh, and you can spin the, the Databricks job clusters up and down if necessary, if you're using job clusters. Of course, none of that applies as much with uh, SQL analytics. And what we do essentially is we apply a lot of AI to the problem of, you know, how do you, um, uh, you know, how do you convert all this business logic into code uh, uh, or into SQL uh, expressions that can be consumed by either the SQL analytics service in the future uh, or today uh, via, uh, you know, jobs clusters and Scala endpoints. And the way essentially our cloud product works, and for, again, for those of you not familiar with this, is that we actually host uh, a multi-tenant environment with that host your control thing. Uh, this is where you do your designs. Uh, the, the, the box that you see here uh, marked as IICS. Uh, this is where you, you do your designs. We store all your metadata. Uh, we have a repository. Uh, that we manage all these things on your behalf. Um, and you essentially federate the runtime to whatever makes the most sense for the use case, right? So if you have some legacy on-premise infrastructure that you're trying to uh, connect to and move that data up into Delta Lake, 
that runtime happens over there and the secure agent that you see listed here in the lower left, that itself is a microservices architecture. So all the different Informatica services, so for example, uh, uh, run there locally, depending on the use case. So if all you're trying to do is move the data from uh, on-premises to Delta Lake, uh, we, we run what we call the mass ingestion service. If you're trying to actually uh, maybe do some tra more traditional ETL and maybe move the data in already well from uh, factors into Delta, we can do that as well and have the, the jobs run on the secure agent. Uh, but your data may also be residing uh, in the upper left, you know, on some some cloud infrastructure, Salesforce, or maybe you have a VPC in AWS or a VNet on in, in Azure, and you want to essentially have the agent live locally next to those applications that are throwing all this data, and then move the data into Delta Lake using native connectivity. And then, and again, the, what we are announcing or and what we have available for customers, second half of the year is the ability to uh, also essentially exercise push down optimization. So the idea is that you build your data pipelines using Informatica, and then you push down the capability, you essentially execute the workloads uh, using the Delta engine if the, del if the data is already in Delta. And from there, of course, the data can go to either BI type of use cases or machine learning, et cetera. And the foundation for all of this is our enterprise data catalog that gives you discoverability um, and visualization of the data as it's flowing. Uh, and which of course also enables you to have things like data governance uh, data protection and security uh, for your data. So one of the advantages of Informatica, of course, is that you don't have to code anything. So what this uh, chart at, at the upper left says is, you know, very typical use case. Uh, and essentially, uh, you can see two sources, two targets. Uh, you're doing some some joining, some aggregation. Um, and you can see here how uh, the, equivalent, the equivalent SQL query below, or even trying to even write some Scala code there on the right, you know, a, this is a lot easier to debug. It's a lot easier to visualize. And more importantly, you are, uh, for example, just as Databricks is moving from uh, uh, or expanding their clients from uh, Scala into SQL, guess what? Your mappings will work with both depending on what you're trying to achieve, right? That's the vision. Um, the next step, of course, is metadata management. As I mentioned before, that's the foundation. It's uh, you know, what allows you to essentially discover the data end to end. So what's inside of Delta as well as that, uh, upstream and downstream of Delta. Uh, you can, you essentially gives you the, think of it like a Google search uh, for your data. It's not quite that, it's actually quite a bit more than that. But essentially we go out there and we pre-index all the data that you have, not just the technical metadata, but also things like affinity or similarity between data sets. Uh, or we also profile the data and say, you know, try to give you quality discourse in the data. And all this, all these information becomes available in the catalog. Uh, and there your different data consumers can collaborate and uh, help each other in terms of understanding for example, the, the uh, suitability of a certain data set for a certain use case, et cetera. So it's both an ability, a, a, a way to have that visibility as well as enable collaboration between data teams, um, which itself is the next step for that is of course data governance. So on top of this data catalog, uh, your uh, data stewards, your chief data officer, uh, your, you know, your the, the, the people in the company that are worried about your data strategies can define their data um, uh, management policies can define the business glossaries for the company uh, and uh, and make sure that you know they establish how they want the data to look and then convert that into data quality rules that also execute locally on, on Databricks uh, and have the sort of that both bottoms up view provided by the catalog as well as the tops down uh, mechanism of making sure that you have your, your uh, data governance elements and your data governance practices uh, in place. Uh, and the other element that glues it all together, of course, is our data quality, uh, which again, you know, you apply your data qualities consistently. Uh, you can uh, essentially visualize the contents of your data quality. You can uh, uh, and then implement rules, etc. And guess what? Uh, with our latest release, all of this can actually run natively uh, inside Databricks. Uh, so again, you don't have to, uh, uh, your data doesn't have to exit the data lake. It can just run locally as necessary. And so we differentiate across all stages, right? So this find and discover the data that you need uh, using the catalog, um, accelerate the movement of that data, no matter the source. Out of the box, we have connectivity to, like I said before, of native connectivity to over 200 sources. And you can also have the ability to do both models of you know, mass ingestion, where you're just moving the data in high volumes from A to B, but you also have the ability to think about uh, potentially maybe uh, transforming the data in movement, a more traditional ETL flow, and then loading the data into, into Databricks. And you can do that now in a cloud native uh, form. And that essentially allows you to also prepare and enrich the data before you start modeling uh, without having to move the data outside of Delta. So you can essentially 
keep the data and the and the work inside of Delta, but still your designs and the intelligence, the, the business models, they all stay um, uh, in, in your sort of uh, metadata layer uh, with Informatica. Um, and ultimately that, this results in massive massive productivity, right? Because what, the, what you don't want to have is have uh, the necessity of, and, and what this results into of course is massive productivity because uh, you know if you don't have to uh, rediscover the wheel every time you have this very scalable mechanism of building your data pipelines and then have them execute on the massively scale, scalable engine of, of Databricks, you really get the best of both worlds. Um, and ultimately, again, you're able to go fully serverless by using uh, the uh, data pipeline processing from Databricks. We do have examples of customers that have talked publicly about the, their ability to do this. This is a company that actually had started their journey on premises with Hadoop, uh, Takeda Pharmaceuticals. Uh, they had gone pretty deep down in the journey and they realized that, you know what, there's a lot of, there's a lot of management overhead for, for us in this. Um, there's a lot of, of course, things to be won from parallel processing and the ELT model and, and having a data lake, but it's really too complex. We need to move one step up. So they decided, they decided to implement Databricks and they have been successfully using Databricks at very high volumes um, as their unified data analytics platform. Uh, they do use notebooks, particularly for data science type of use cases, but they really use Informatica when it comes to actually uh, uh, building those data engineering pipelines that feed into uh, the Delta Lake. And so you get the best of both worlds. You get the robustness, the repeatability, the auditability of building data pipelines using Informatica, as well as the ability to build uh, and have the high agility of building uh, data science use cases using notebooks. And all of that, of course, is visible uh, through the data catalog. So what we want to do just to close is again with Informatica and Databricks is to help you accelerate your development uh, of uh, data engineering pipelines as well as have complete data governance so that you ultimately have, again have the best of both worlds, high agility as well as high control. I would invite you to get started. Uh, you can find out more uh, at informatica.com slash Databricks uh, of how we're gonna help accelerate your data uh, initiatives. And I would love to get your feedback. Uh, please don't forget to uh, rate and review the sessions. And uh, let's see if I have any leftover questions from the Q&A panel that I can answer for you. Thank you very much for your attention and have a good rest of your day.